everybody. Today we are going to be installing the starter back into the Hummer because honestly I'd forgotten I took it out. Uh, and then we're gonna wire up some big battery wire because the way that that goes is alternator, starter, battery. And so we've gotta create, build two wires. One's gonna go from the alternator to the starter and the other one's gonna go from the starter to the battery. And that's how the charging system is gonna be installed for the 12 volt portion of the Humvee. So I'm gonna show you how to use some giant wire crimpers. I'm talking, they look like bolt cutters to correctly um, build these wires, battery cables for any vehicle, but you have to go out and buy them and they're really expensive. So if you don't have those, I don't know what to tell you. Um, soldering can work for a lot of people. I don't like soldering because uh, the solder can break, it can crack, it can come out. A crimp is a physical connection and I've gone over that in a past video a long time ago when I saw the crap they did to the blazer um, and it was all soldered and garbage. But yeah, let me go ahead and get started. We'll put uh, the, the cable, one end of the cable together first. We gotta measure for it, see where we wanna route it. And then we'll come back out here and uh, on the table and I'll build it up and show you how I'm doing that. All right, here we are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the starter. We're gonna wire up the starter. Before we get started, <laughs> started in the starter, uh, there's three connections. Ignore the one that has the jumper wire. You've got this one and you've got this one. This is a little bitty thing. Let me see if I can zoom in here. All right, so this is where the actual starter wire goes. So like when you turn the key, it activates the wire that hits this with 12 volts. And then this triggers Big Daddy right here to activate the solenoid to get the motor running that then turns the gear inside here, just kind of tucked in there, to crank your vehicle. So what I have to do is build a wire out of this big old stuff. Now this is just one aug, it's not crazy big, but the electrical, the 12 volt system in this truck is not crazy. The 24 volt system in the truck runs dual winches, so I made it just ignorantly huge. I'll kind of give you an example of the, like this is the ground wire that I used for um, the 24 volt system compared to a one aug, so it's significantly larger. Um, what I'm going to do is first off, this is a 5 16 one aug uh, crimp on style connector. Make sure it goes onto the starter, hole fits, that's wonderful. Now I'm going to get, and I'm going to uh, shave off, you know, I got to mark and kind of shave off that much of the um, casing around here. I'll show you the wires. This is marine grade. I uh, forget the name of the company that makes it. Anchor, Anchor Marine. And so once I shave that off, I put it in here and then I've got to crimp it. Now to crimp this thing right here, it is not some hand pliers like you would see normally. Let me zoom back out a little bit. It's actually these guys right here. So it's like a giant set of bolt cutters, except uh, you're not cutting a bolt, you are crimping big wires. And so I like crimping, and let me kind of explain that for a second, because I know a lot of you are like, well, just solder it. Um, I don't like soldering. One, soldering is not allowed, from what I understand it, on boats, because the vibration of a boat, the solder cracks, and the vibration in the Humvee, it does not ride like a Cadillac, so I kind of think of it like a boat. The next reason being is you have to think of a solder like, um, if the wire goes in and you don't crimp it, it can come out. Uh, um, <laughs> but the, uh, if you do crimp it, like, let's say when you crimp the case around it and the wire kind of bulges out at the top, it physically cannot come out like period in the story. The only way it can come out is if the wire physically rips and you're not ripping a wire that big. And if I am ripping a wire that big, I'm doing something I should not have been doing to begin with. So, um, that's kind of why I like crimping better than soldering in a stupid little story. Now, I do have to cut this. I need to get a nice level cut on it. So I have these, what I call thumb cutter offers. These will legitimately and 100% cut your thumb off of your body. I hate using them because that's all I can think about. But I'm just going to get a nice straight cut. And uh, I want to start with something like that. So from here, 
I'll uh, pause the video for a second. I'm going to cut this off and then I will be back. All right. So I got it off. Now, what I did was I laid the uh, wire down. I put this beside it, took a permanent marker, marked how deep it needed to be based on this connection, took a, a straight razor, just went around and cut just the insulation off. Nice and slow, nice and smooth, be patient. And now that, uh, the great thing about this wire is it's a billion of these little bitty wires, which is great for electricity. Kind of makes this a little difficult. So just spin it as you put it on. So now when I put it on, I've got this really great solid connection there. It's pushed all the way in. So now all I need is some heat shrink before I crimp it, crimp it, and, uh, sorry, went out of frame there. Heat shrink, crimp it, and then we'll have this end done and we can put it back in the truck and then get the other side. We'll have to cut it, figure out how long we need it, where we're going to run it, uh, things like that. So I'll be right back and we will, I'll try to crimp it on video, but I need like nine hands to do the crimping plus this and it's going to be crazy. All right, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Here we go. So I've got the terminal in the device opened up ready to go so now all i should have to do in theory is put the wire in which is not it's not easy because um it is like wrestling well we'll just skip that i got a couple wire things that are out it looks good so it's on i've got my heat shrink on there you don't want to forget it and you just cramp ah and that's it. So now it is crimped. Uh, the die set, you can change these dies in here. I'll zoom back in. You can change these dies based on the gauge of wire you're doing. But it tells you on this chart, on the actual stem here, how many crimps it takes. Because when you get to that bigger, like, 2 aught 3 aught wire, you have to crimp it twice. One at the top and one at the bottom. But this one's just a single crimp wire... I can open it up now, um, fall on the ground, hold tight, bear with me. So now I've got it crimped. Look at that. And that is a mechanical, physical connection, not going anywhere. <laughs> ow, ow. Whew, I almost pulled my shoulder. Um, and now I got to do the heat shrink, which I don't have any smaller. I'm hoping this three quarter uh, melts down pretty good. So let's see about this. Uh, make sure I get it where I want it. This stuff is so thick, but it has glue on the inside, which is why I like it so much. It's a watertight seal. Like I said, try to use marine grade stuff because it is just so much better than um, your automotive grade stuff. Man, this is uh, it's doing a lot of shrinking, but I'm getting close to burning it. This top piece doesn't want to shrink down. There we go. Come on. Do it without burning. Oh, yeah. We're burning the mess out of it. It won't be the prettiest connection, but it will be watertight. It's shrunk down a lot. So, now we just... Get that glue set in there. Oh man, Whew, that is hot. As I just hit it with a blowtorch. But you can actually, I don't know if you can see that. See that right here, this is the glue coming out. It's almost like lined with some hot glue is what it seems like. But now that is cased in glue, watertight. And that now goes on the starter. So I'll put this back in the truck get this hooked up and then I can run the rest. I will tell you one thing I learned because of where the starter is. This was the uh, power wire from last time. 
And if you see all of this smooth, that's where it melted. So this was way too close to the exhaust manifold. And so for this wire, because you have to learn from your mistakes, I got some of this wonderful stuff, which is the DEI heat shield or heat sheath, good up to a bazillion degrees. Let's see. It'll reflect up to 500 degrees of continuous heat. I think a manifold probably gets hotter than that, but it's better than uh, what it was. It's better than some plastic wrap. I mean, I'm not laying it on the manifold. So this will be good. So I'll go set all that up and I'll be back with you. All right, I wanted to show you what it looks like in here. So this I'm laying under the Hummer. This is the starter. It's just in loosely. I can you know, raise it and lower it, whatever. So I've got the wire on the correct stud. I've got the heat wrap on it and it's gonna go kind of far away. The manifold protective, or not protective, but heat shield is here. So I've got plenty of room. I'm not worried about it at all. But what I will probably do is you can see where the harness for the Holly is also in heat shield up there. I will probably end up running this to that further down that way and uh, you can kind of see where it all comes up together. That way I can keep all my wiring grouped and it's gonna go over the uh, the intake right there. The reason I'm going over the intake is I don't want a stick coming up and grabbing any wires from right here coming off this tire. So I don't wanna go under it, I wanna go over it. Um, and I think that'll be the safest bet. So. That's what we just built hooked up to the starter side. Now I just got to go measure and stuff and then cut off and crimp for the battery side. But I will actually do that towards the end of the build because I want to get everything put together up there. I just wanted to get this here done now. So let's go see. All what right, everybody. Uh, I've looked around at what I can get done before parts get here. I need to hook up this blue wire. Uh, this blue wire is for the starter uh, this is actually activates the starter. So when I go to crank the truck, this is going to go over to the starter and activate that. When I did it originally, I did not have um, a fuse on this wire. So when you go to crank the truck, if something were to, you know, short or whatever, it's going to burn up the wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to install one of these blade fuse holders and wire that up. Um, if you want to put some of these on your project. So this little rubber piece goes in the bottom. I'm going to use it first because I have to push the wire through that part. Just move it all the way down. Then we're going to go through the actual connector itself. Try to go through the same side. And then we're going to put on one of these types of connectors. I forget what they're called. I'll try to remember in the comments. But uh, Metropack, Metropack connectors. And all they do, I don't know if you can see this, but they lay into, just like that, they lay into the connector where the, the sheathing is grabbed by these two tabs, or the insulation is grabbed, and then the wire is grabbed by four little tabs up there. And that's it. So I've got to crimp that. I bought new crimpers. I've never used these before, so I might screw this up completely, but um, let's see, should be this one, and I think I just put it in there, and oh no, it's already crooked. Release. Let me figure these out. I'll be right back. I went ahead and set it up inside the crimper, so all I have to do is push the wire in. I hope that's all I have to do. Hard to see, there we go. Yeah, I don't like this very much. I've used the other ones, the more expensive crimpers, imagine that, and they're way better. I like for y'all to see me struggle. Struggle bus. I guess let's just crimp it and see what it looks like, shall we? Um. Oh yeah, that's gonna be totally too. Well, I say that, it actually worked. Um, I felt like I was crimping it way too hard, but when you look at the connector, let's see if I can zoom in. 
it actually works. It crimps the copper and then it crimps the sheathing. And then all you do, uh, let's see, is pull to seat, which I can't remember which way these go. Sometimes they're a pain in the butt. There we go. And now that is locked in place just like that. And we'll do the other side, and what happens is the blade fuse just pushes right in there, and now you have a fused wire. So I'll do the other side where we come through, put on the pull-to-seat connector, pull it out, and then I can run the wire where it needs to go. And now I've got a fused wire instead of just a straight up, straight to the, the deal wire. So I need to go get the other wire and start doing it. All right, so I've got the other wire. I've got the terminal connector. So all I'm gonna do is same thing. Let me get it on the right side of this wire. I don't know what that, that's for. Um, we're gonna come up through the weatherproof part. We're gonna go up through, different shade of blue, but it won't matter. Up through the uh, actual fuse. And now, we're gonna take and lay this into there like so. And then the crimper will crimp the bottom part around the uh, insulation, the top part around the wire, and then we will pull to seat. So let's see, I say that, but again, I think the easiest way to do it is to set it up in the crimper like so until I get a click like it holds all right so now it's holding now I get the wire just put the wire in and then crimp yeah so that tool works good. It, uh, I'm really happy with that. Check that out. Crimped it right in. And now all I do is I pull back. Get it lined up like the other one. And when you, you'll hear a click. And now it's in. So now there's a blade fuse. Pop that in. I've got a cover. Pop the cover on. And now... With all of that together, I have a fuse. And so I can mount this under the dash, which I'll do later. I've got another one down there for the fuse panel. But um, yeah, so if there's ever an issue, I just pop the cover off, check the fuse, and I'm good to go. So now I run this wire, the light blue, all the way over to the starter. And uh, yeah, so there you go. That's how you do that. You need some special tools. You need the crimpers. Um, this is a CP. I got it off eBay. It was like 30 bucks. CP336F. And then these terminals are super cheap, obviously. Get them from like Waytech Wire or any of the wire supply places, electrical supply places. And that's it. So I'm going to run this wire and then I'll be done for the night because it's getting late. And um, all right, so you can see the blue wire here. I run it to the altered, like out of the, I don't know if you can see, but out from under the dash out to the alternator, because what's going to happen is it's going to meet up with the like power supply wire that runs from the alternator down to the starter, because these are both going to the same place. It's not ever going to hook into that, but I'm having it tee over. So when I loom everything, it looks a little bit nicer and put together. So this is going to run. It comes back behind the motor down here where we were uh, messing with the regulator on the last video. It's going to swing out, come behind the engine, and then the starter's right down there. I can't run it down there yet because I'm going to have another three-foot section of this heat wrap onto that main wire. And I want to try to run that inside the heat wrap with the main wire. So I need to get it here and uh, crimped on and stuff like that. And then I can put all this together and that'll be, that will electrical wise, if I wanted to, at that point, I could hook the battery up 
and crank it. I mean, I'm not saying it would run. I'm just saying I could turn it over because the starter would engage. But, um, you know, that getting a lot closer. But you can see this is the primary wire for the 24-volt system, which is right there. Um, this is the primary wire for the rear winch, I believe. No, this is this is the front winch. I couldn't even tell you where the hell the rear winch is. I guess it's in the back. I mean, the rear winch controller is in the back. It's just been so long since I've messed with those. But, um, yeah, so I've got to do, I got to do a lot still, obviously, but this was good progress today. Yeah, so this is really good progress today. I put together or built the, uh, the wire that runs from the starter to the battery. You can see it right there, actually. Now I just got to have one that runs from the starter to the alternator to keep everything charged in the system. Uh, the blue wire is going to be for the ignition. Uh, got that done. Got a fuse put in line with it. I hope you learned something how to either crimp one of those big cables like that or how to put an inline fuse into a wire. Uh, they sell those kits at West Marine and most auto parts stores. The thing I hated when I bought the kit, you know, it had like three inches of wire hanging out of the bottom of that fuse. And then you have to splice into it, which is easy, but it's not clean because then you have heat shrink and all this other crap. So I like to be able to just pull those wires out, recrimp new ones, pull the seat, and just have a really nice looking setup. So, uh, I'm, I'm excited about this. I'm going to continue working on it. I'm going to try to work on it every night this week. Next week, I'll have the kids, so I can't work on it when I have them because uh, early bedtimes and schoolwork and so forth and so on. But every other week, I'll be getting this thing done, and hopefully, y'all stick with me and enjoy the ride. Because once it's done, I ain't touching it for a while. We're just going to enjoy it. We're going to go off-road. We're going to do some long-distance trips. We're going to go out west. we got a lot planned. So uh, stick with me. It's going to be fun. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Bye.